Hi, I'm Lynn Wise, and with me today is Reggie Thompson. Today we're going to be talking about the impeachment proceedings against Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff. Reggie, so yesterday the lower house of the Brazilian legislature voted to go forward with the impeachment against Rousseff. What are the next steps? So at this point, the vote will be taken to the Senate, uh, which has the final say over whether or not Rousseff is going to be finally impeached. This is expected to occur at some point in the next few weeks, although a final date has not actually been settled upon yet. However, at this point, we can definitely expect um, greater negotiations between the parties that orchestrated the impeachment proceedings, really as to what the shape of the coming government is going to look like, what policies they want to proceed with, and really what kind of alliances they're going to make. At this point, it looks like uh, the bulk of negotiations are happening between uh, the Democratic Movement Party of Brazil, which until a few uh, weeks ago was Rousseff's major ally in the ruling coalition, once that group left, impeachment became far more likely uh, for the president. And the other side of that is the Social Democracy Party of Brazil. Together, these groups are the first and second largest uh, political blocs in the lower house. And so most of the uh, policies that are going to be pushed forward by a new government, which is going to be headed by Michel Temer, the vice president of Brazil, are probably going to come from both of these uh, groups. Now, the policies they're going to pursue are things like pension reform, potentially greater anti-corruption, even though some of the individuals right now um, that are pursuing an impeachment against Rousseff are suspected of uh, great involvement in the Petrobras corruption scandal. Mm -hmm. And so these are the next steps um, that we're going to see in the political landscape in Brazil. So the Petrobras scandal that you mentioned is separate from the impeachment proceedings. Um, what is Rousseff accused of and, and how is it separate from the Petrobras and how is it kind of related as well? So Rousseff is accused of violations of the country's uh, fiscal responsibility legislation. While a court ruled last year that that was a criminal offense and that was seized upon by the uh, pro-impeachment crowd in the lower house to push forward this impeachment, it's completely separate from the Petrobras scandal. The Petrobras scandal involves companies taking kickbacks and overcharging on uh, construction projects for the state energy firm Petrobras. Now, the way the Petrobras scandal could further affect the Brazilian political landscape is that there have been claims that both uh, Rousseff's and the vice president's re-election campaigns were funded in some part um, with funds taken from the Petrobras corruption scandal. Now, if the Brazilian electoral court rules in the coming months um, that that is the case indeed, then both uh, both uh, the vice president and Rousseff, if she survives a Senate impeachment vote, which is becoming increasingly unlikely by the day, would both have to step down and new elections would have to be held in Brazil. And you mentioned that um, there's a possibility that Rousseff herself could hold early elections. Can you explain that process? So the president can call for early elections and such a measure would have to go to Congress. Um, now, considering that much of the lower house turned against Rousseff for the impeachment process, it's increasingly unlikely that that um, particular measure would make it through the lower house. You've got to remember that the Workers' Party is a minority in the uh, in the lower house and increasingly in the Senate, and they're becoming more and more isolated politically as the impeachment proce process proceeds. Now, really, early elections would, to some extent, diffuse the situation in the streets because it would not lead to a greater political confrontation. It would instead provide an outlet for people to vote for a new president. Um, individuals like former President Luis Inácio da Silva, uh, known as Lula, mm -hmm. he could conceivably run in such, a, in such an election. But you have to remember he also faces some criminal investigations against himself as well. So a new election would open up the field for um, other candidates to reach the presidency. But it's not clear at all that that is something that um, people from the Democratic Movement Party of Brazil and from the Social Democracy Party of Brazil would allow to happen. So you mentioned uh, Lula da Silva, and how are the Petrobras proceedings against him and also just in generally, how are they uh, going? So Lula is facing a criminal investigation into his alleged involvement in corruption. That particular process um, still has to advance. He has not been charged with anything. It is still um, advancing and uh, prosecutors, federal prosecutors are still gathering evidence against Lula. Now, Lula da Silva remains uh, one of the more popular politicians at a national level, despite the Workers' Party's continuing uh, problems with the impeachment and ongoing involvement in the corruption scandal. 
So it really is uh, something that the prosecutors are likely to continue uh, moving carefully on because while this criminal investigation is likely to proceed somewhat, there's also the possibility that peop- that this would upset people. Lula still has plenty of supporters in the country and you could see some increased unrest if he is, for example, detained again for questioning or um, outright charged with uh, with uh, criminal charges. So it definitely looks like the case against Rousseff is looking um, more dire as, as time progresses. So thank you for talking with us today. For more on Latin America and the case in Brazil, please visit stratfor.com.